So you had asked about the relationship between um, demand mm. and SEO. And mm. shouldn't you evaluate demand when you're evaluating whether you should take on an SEO client? Or maybe you think about it from another way. Maybe at, before you pay for SEO services, you should look at demand. So here is an article I wrote on Reliable Acorn that shows a website's traffic when compared to demand. Mm -hmm. Basically using data from Google Trends. And so there's all kinds of great information you can get for, here's a great example. Demand for the topic of, of what this company sells, they're actually organic search traffic. And then you, and sometimes the brand is big enough where you'll show up a brand in Google Trends. So then you can see things like, well, look at this, this traffic graph, the yellow line, even though it's a different dimension in the traffic, as, tra as traffic is going down, so is demand for the brand. So we're learning that less people are looking for this company's name and that's having a big implication in their overall traffic. Hmm. Because the, tr the demand for their services is not down. Right? Interesting. Or here we go. This is a pretty successful campaign. This is a, a very seasonal, heavily seasonal, heavily, heavily seasonal industry, right? Demand, drop, demand up. Well, traffic reflects demand based on their season. Mm -hmm. So you can use Google Trends to determine whether you is a good SEO client for you as an SEO provider, but also whether you have realistic expectations as a customer of SEO for things, right? So if this client began their SEO campaign in November, that would suck because be like, whoa, we went down. Why are we down? This SEO stuff isn't working. Reality, mm -hmm. they're down because no one's ready to buy their seasonal product in November. This happens to be a landscaping company. Mm -hmm. And they, no one buys landscaping. However, April, tends to be a really big month for landscaping in this part of the country and it's traffic goes. So, you know, we, we can beat the demand trap chart, but we should consider things like Google trend data while we're making evaluations for our SEO. Yeah. Right. Can you give us a copy to that link, please, in the oh, chat? Well. That, that, yeah. I, I, I know when I'm looking at some keywords to target, I, um, we look at <clears throat> the trend on the keyword itself. If that's, you know, going up or maybe staying the same or whatever. Well, what I like about Google Trends is it's not keyword specific, it's topic specific. So you yeah. can th do things like, is this industry going up or down? Yeah. Or is this brand going up? So with this client here, where we had a big brand issue, they went through a major shift of the what they offered. They switched from B to C to B to B. Ooh. Yeah. And so you can kind of see less people interested because they're not B2C anymore. That's right. So is this bad SEO or a branding consideration outside of SEO? Because mm -hmm. this is not a graph that I would be proud to provide. This is downhill traffic, <clears throat> almost half year over year. But if less people are looking for you, because now it's B2B, so your, your customer base is smaller, and people who used to find you because you could offer them a service, you no longer offer them a service. You offer their company a service. Mm. And so, you know, it's not really helpful to you. So, so in our, so to me, this 
this gives me the um i mean you got to have you just got to we just got to whatever we're going to do for our seo we just got to make sure that we're talking to our clients regularly because we got to understand their industry right yeah so we had our meeting with our client it's fine this is recorded but um their their product one of the main things on their for their pro their their product line is um kind of an expensive proposition right to do to 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 buy some of the stuff requires you know fifteen twenty thousand dollars on up yeah well if it's an expense because we were looking at well why is some of the general traffic down to the site just all across the board well when you got interest rates going up potential recession then people are like ah i can't afford this big ticket because i can't borrow the money to do yep. it so that's so so we're looking at that and even if you if even if you do it at, from a data perspective a year over year kind of thing um traffic from september 2022 to september 2021 is not going to reflect that because interest rates and everything was okay a year ago now it's changing Mm -hmm. yeah so the pandemic the, is a huge yes yeah the pandemic was a huge was, impact so, so you gotta un, that's why you gotta talk to the clients and ask them if there's trends going down what's going on is there anything that you can think of that explains it and well google trends is a great way to kind of have objective data on that right because sometimes clients are either overly optimistic or overly pessimistic yeah and this is like since we're doing search, this is demand in search. So to incorporate this in reporting can really help explain. Now it holds you more accountable because if you're going up and it's only going up because seasonal demand's going up, well, <laughs> you're maybe not doing much for SEO. It's just seasonal demand. But then again, if seasonal demand goes up, and your traffic goes up to a greater extent, ah, maybe you're doing something right. Maybe you're 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 winning because you're getting a greater portion of that traffic than you did like last year or something. Uh, it's just an interesting way of, you know, we for instance, we used to report uh, in my old agency way back when when we actually had keyword data for traffic. Um, we would report we would we would exclude branded phrases from Google search result traffic because we could and we could say hey this is non-branded traffic you received not people looking for your brand presumably seo doesn't affect people number of people looking for your brand name mm. right we introduce people to what you have to offer well we don't have that data anymore so we can't like weed out things like oh there was you're, you were featured in a major television news thing and you spiked right? So people search for your brand name. That's not really an SEO success, except that, well, because we did SEO, they could find your brand name, but that's kind of really, is that really what the power of SEO is? So this kind of kind of help you weed out things like that. You, it assumes your brand is big enough that you have a listing as an entity in Google Trends, which is not true for every brand. Mm -hmm. um, but it does, you can kind of weed out, because the neat thing, and this article shows it, the neat thing is, is you can say, I want to zone in on this metropolitan area and see demand for this service in this metropolitan area. So you could say, I want to look for dog walkers in Atlanta area, not Atlanta proper, Atlanta area. Yeah. And you could see, oh, wow, like uh, demand is really up for dog walkers in the summer and really down in the winter, right? Or whatever, you know, or the opposite, maybe. Yeah. That, that, that's just the way I, I consider this while looking at my SEO reports.